So when we took a look at how to draw stick diagrams, we did it using a systematic approach, but that approach does not give us the optimal stick diagram. So let's take a look at another example of transforming a schematic into a stick diagram. In this case, we are looking at a two-input NOR. The two-input NOR contains two PMOS transistors and two NMOS transistors. We are going to draw uh, two horizontal metal lines to represent supply and ground. Then we'll, we'll draw a uh, dotted line across the middle, which separates PMOSs on the top from NMOSs on the bottom. Um, then, more or less at the same location of transistors in the schematic, we are going to draw sections of N plus and P plus diffusion. There will be four sections in this case. We will draw horizontal polylines across each of the diffusion tracks to create transistors. In this case, we have created two NMOS transistors and two PMOS transistors. Um, then we will use the polylines to um, join NMOS and PMOS transistors together so that they have the same input. And we will use metal lines to extend the inputs so that they are available to the uh, external uh, ports of the standard cell and also extend the output towards uh, the uh, external port of the standard cell. So we have done We've actually moved through the steps we've described uh, in sequence, but we are missing something. Specifically, when you look at two transistors in series, um, it's, if you translate the schematic directly into uh, a stick diagram, you will end up using two diffusion tracks. In this case, we are using N plus and N plus. Um, this would be the case, for example, in a two input NAND. This is First of all, uh, very inefficient, and secondly, it's also uh, very uh, unnecessary. Because simply, uh, you can use a single track of N plus diffusion um, and just cross it with two tracks of polysilicon and create the same two transistors. This happens because node X is the drain of transistor MN1 and the source of transistor MN2. And so they can share the same diffusion area, the same N plus area for their drains and sources. Uh, the difference between these two implementations is huge because uh, when we contact diffusion to go up to metal and then contact metal to go back down to diffusion, when we look at design rules, we'll find that uh, there's a huge area overhead to making a contact. The contact itself has a minimum uh, area and then the diffusion and metal around it have to make a clearance around it. The metal track itself would have a minimum distance that it can travel. And so overall, the, this implementation is going to take a much larger area than this implementation. And there's no need to do so. They, they are actually the same diffusion points. And so whenever we can use a single uh, diffusion track to implement multiple transistors, we should. In the case where we have transistors in series, it's obvious to see this, and you can do it just by inspection. But even transistors in parallel, even transistors which have a much more complicated connection, could share diffusion tracks because they do share drains or sources, or even both. You know, in case of two transistors in series, they are sharing both the source and the drain. Uh, and so there's a, a systematic approach or a systematic way to finding out if, in a certain circuit, we can use a single diffusion track or a number of diffusion tracks to implement all the transistors that exist. And this is called the Euler path approach. And the Euler path approach um, is an algorithm that is used um, usually in other uh, areas of engineering, but it can be applied here to just answer the question, how can we implement this circuit using a single diffusion track? So the Euler path approach asks a simple question. Can you find a path in the pull-down network and in the pull-up network that does the following? It covers every single transistor. And the order in which it covers transistors in the pull-down network is the same as the order that it covers them in the pull-up network. 
and at the same time it visits every node at most twice. So if we look at this network, for example, we find that we have a path in the pull-down network that begins at ground and then uh, visits input C, then visits input A, and then visits input B, and ends up at ground again. So only ground has been visited twice by this path. Every other node has been visited only once. Now, we go to the pull-up network and we try to find if there is a path that implements the same order of inputs, which is C, A, B. And that pass has to satisfy the same conditions, that it only uh, visits every node at most twice. And so we find that if we begin at F and we pass through C and then A and then B and back to node X, we have visited the inputs in the same order that we did in the pull-down network, and only node X was visited twice, no node was visited more than twice. This means that this pass this path is an Euler path, and this means that we can actually implement this circuit using uh, a single N plus diffusion track and a single P plus diffusion track. And so what we do is uh, we start by drawing polysilicon lines vertically, and the order of the polysilicon lines should be the order of how the variables appear in the path. So we find that the order here is CBA because you can also visit C, then B, then A in the pull-down network, and C, then B, then A in the pull-up network, and that is also an Euler path. So you could arrange the inputs uh, in the polysilicon as CAB or CBA. It just has to follow the same order of uh, the variables in a path that satisfies the criterion of the Euler path. Then we draw a P plus diffusion track across the uh, top, uh, you know, above the dotted line, and an N plus diffusion track at the bottom, and then we have created three N MOS transistors and three P MOS transistors. The fact that we had an Euler path, all it does is it ensures that there is some connection of nodes using metal lines that guarantees that this circuit in the uh, second uh, box can actually be made to uh, function as the circuit in the schematic. And so if we look, for example, at the NMOS transistor, uh, transistors A and B, um, these are in series. And so B is connected through its source to the ground. And so we're just going to use this node to connect B to the ground. A at the drain is connected to the output node. And so we are going to take the drain of A and just use this as F. So this is going to be F, the output. Now, the drain of A is the, uh, is the drain of C. So if you look at C and look at its drain, you have to short it to the drain of A, which is through this metal line. And the source of C is the source of B, which is true in this case because this is the node that is connected to ground. Similarly, we can find the uh, connections in the metal, uh, in, uh, in the pull-up network that realize this connection. And we are guaranteed to find such a, a, con a connection using metal wires, which is going to be fairly um, simple because we have managed to cover the entire circuit in an Euler path. Uh, so let's take another example. In this example, uh, the Euler path starts at node X and uh, covers the uh, variables in the order A, C, D, B. We managed to find a similar path in the pull-up network, which goes A, C, uh, D, and B. And it's going to visit node Z twice, which is fine, because we are allowed to visit a node once or twice, or never, but we are not allowed to visit it uh, three times or more. Uh, again, we're going to just draw uh, polysilicon lines vertically and arrange the inputs in the same order of the Euler path. A single PMOS uh, or P plus diffusion strip across the top, a single N plus diffusion strip across the bottom. And then we're going to use metal wires to realize the connections in the or original schematic. The Euler path approach can also be extended to networks in which we cannot find a single path that covers all the nodes. Uh, so for example, this network, uh, we can find a path that covers all inputs while not, uh, we're not passing a single node more than twice in the pull-down network. We can do the same in the pull-up network. 
but they will never be the same path, meaning we will never have the same order of, of variables in the pull-up network and the pull-down network. What this means is that you cannot use a single strip of diffusion to implement all the transistors. But we find in this case that we can actually do it using two Euler paths, and one of them covers the inputs A, uh, excuse me, C, B, A, and one covers the inputs um, F, E, D. And so we just do that, you know, we use D, E, F, and C, B, A, and a single strip for each of them, but they will be separated uh, right here. So there will be a separation here. Notice that you can actually uh, join them and the pull down network, but the pull up network, they cannot be joined. So sometimes you can do some more optimization once you realize um, what the circuit looks like. Now the order path approach is gonna give us the minimum number of diffusion strips we can use to implement any circuit. This does not necessarily uh, correspond to a the best stick diagram. The best in terms of what? The best in terms of area or speed or any, any metric that we care about. Doesn't necessarily correspond to that. It often does correspond or, you know, correlate positively to area because we are using less contacts but not always. We have to just be um, cognizant of what it does. It just reduces the number of strips we use. That's all it's trying to do. Uh, sometimes there can be hand optimizations that a smart designer can make that reduce the area even further. And um, we have to be open to that possibility.